Well, over the weekend we attended the over the board rapid tournament. Uh, we'd entered the under 1450 section because our rapid rating is uh, 1263. And basically we're wanting to try and carry on from where we left off in 2019. And as you know from the Humble Chess Wizard video, um, ser video series, um, we were building up quite nicely um, on working on the answer, uh, starting that process from the 2019 onwards. But then obviously um, we all had to go indoors and everything was online. So that kind of halted the process of what we were focusing on. We were really focusing on over the board games so I'm being realistic to myself in terms of, well, okay, um, we performed quite nicely online, but that shows like a good progression. Um, but um, what I'm doing is I'm basically starting from where I was at uh, 2019. I'm not um, gonna pretend in any way, shape or form that I'm any higher than that level because I will make mistakes, I will make errors, and I'm looking at trying to improve my game going forward. Uh, with the potential target, we have a target in mind of what kind of rating per se we're looking at, but currently I, f I don't know if there's a problem with the rating system or not. And um, the organizer mentioned something about it's in a bit of state of flux at the minute, the rating system. So I'm not too sure what's actually happening with that. I hope it straightens itself out if there is a problem. And um, because obviously that's what I'm kind of focused on. I'm focusing on trying to improve uh, my rating tortoise pace not speeding through or anything like that not trying to be flashy and thinking you know I, I can take out higher level players um over the board and all that type of stuff we've gone through the experience of um understanding why people are high level online so i don't really need to go through that process again because we've covered that in the humble chess wizard videos so in my head uh, at this moment in time really comfortable and happy to be actually back in the over the board scene meeting new players and um, some of the old guard um, weren't around but I'm not too sure if the um, recent pandemic period has seen them off I hope it hasn't because they're really good players you know there's a, quite a lot of players that don't have no interest in playing online um, but they are monsters on the board even at my level that I play at uh, there's some really strong players who probably you know probably shouldn't even be in my rating area but maybe they don't consistently perform to that high level and that's why they're still within my um rating bracket but in any event it would be nice to see them playing again in the tournaments and um looking forward to meeting them but met some new people and the atmosphere was fantastic it was brilliant and the organizer did a fantastic job i'm really pleased when organizers do a really good job and um, it went smoothly uh, it's, it's stuck to time six games it's quite a lot of games really and yeah I'm really happy with that and they're doing more continued um, tournaments throughout the year as well I may attend a few of those but I'm really focused more on the longer play games and the 45 minute 15 second um, I don't think I've ever done a 90 minute and 10 second game but that is what is coming up in September so I'm hope I've, I've actually applied. I've got my name in. My name is on the list, and so that's like a weekend congress tournament. So I'm going to be really looking forward to that one. But having said that, we're here and now, and basically the rapid play tournament commenced. There was a middle, and then there was a dramatic end. So we played as white here. Uh, so push through the centre, nice and steady making the notes as I'm going at this point uh, so feeling happy that I've got the first notations down and just taking it nice and steady the opponent was really kind of blitzing out the moves and really quite quick which can be disconcerting because you, you're actually thinking god I'm actually going to lose on time here because they are moving fast even if they might not be finding the best moves I'm then struggling with writing and putting notes down and then I've got to check to make sure that they're making viable moves and then I've got to make sure I'm writing down the, the right movements uh, on, the, on the piece of paper 
So a lot of things were starting to kick in and I felt like I'd just started my first ever ever in life over the board game. Okay, so try to calm myself down a little bit but I still had that panic in my head of well, should I be notating here or not so they developed the night so we pushed through the center looking to see whether or not we can get rid of the um, center and work around the center as, as much as possible and they captured and then we captured and then they moved the night and then at this point here I thought to myself well you know we have seen this type of maneuver before but i didn't really want to see it in this my first game because i'm like oh that means i'm gonna have to do some odd looking maneuvers now because it's not actually captured and we're not done the exchange here keeping it nice and straightforward you know usually knight takes and the queen takes and it's all pretty straightforward but now they're doing a knight dance and I did try as I'm doing my notation and I'm soaking in the atmosphere as well and I'm like being giddy because I'm actually playing in the tournament um, I said to myself well okay I said to myself well maybe he's lost the tempo here uh, developing this um, knight across here which is normally what they do because obviously they've not developed another piece so I'm seeing well okay how can I take advantage of this but I don't want to rush it I'm looking at the boards on the on you know the pieces on the board and I'm like whoa I'm, getting, I'm adjusting myself um it's a good job I did practice a few over the boardy type things but it's not really the same because the atmosphere is not the same um so playing in this tour tournament it was yeah I, I need to really try and get into the mode so I bring the bishop out tentatively okay nice and tentatively i'm thinking maybe we're coming across here because potentially he's going to be coming across and attacking with his bishop potential so they develop their knight so immediately i'm thinking well there could be some sort of x-ray through keep it simple so we'll just develop the knight first so I'm protecting the pawn and obviously the bishop could have gone here but i'm like saying more pieces i can get out the better it's going to be for me based on what we've been practicing anyway so they bring their bishop out attacking our knight the queen is protecting the knight so feeling fairly happy there so king safety again it was kind of like not all jumbled up in my head but i had the idea as to what i was meant to do but because i was kind of really excited about playing the game um the order didn't seem to come out in the way that i would normally do it so we still do have this potential threat coming here on the queen but king safety was uh, paramount so they castled so we could still put the x-ray through to the queen at this point so at this point here um the opponent actually kind of maybe potentially did something a little bit um erroneous right at the very start of the competition and um, the organizer went through the rules of the games and it basically one of the rules was it was touch move and my opponent while the um, organizer was speaking reminded themselves you know by and he turned to me and looked at me and touch move right yep yeah, yep yeah, okay so and um, they knew the rule of touch move so that's fair enough because it was reiterated by himself when he was explaining it to me and so at this point um i felt like i transferred all my giddiness and and you know excitement into the player because they ended up touching the knight they lifted the knight up and they were just about to move it and place it somewhere and then he looked at me and he went and i says it's touch move that's the rules i felt really bad but at the same token i said to myself well mr nice guy has got to stop a reoccurring in these types of tournaments and in these types of games um as we mentioned before i mean i i, I have let off many players um in the past for doing that but in competition i've really got to I've really got to be hardened in that aspect and really go with what the rules are there for you know if i had touched that knight and moved it they would definitely would have said you have to move it you know i've fallen foul of that in a, another competition where i'd actually touched the piece um and this player just went well touch move touch move i'm like 
uh, I was only adjusted it, but no, that he didn't wear any of that. So yeah, so I felt a bit hardened here, and so they had to make a move. So they made this move here. I don't know if that there was anything else they could have done. Maybe taken the pawn, you know, piece for a piece or something like that. So we took the queen off the ball, but that doesn't mean that we've won the game. Um, so I'm taking my notes down and I'm thinking, yeah, even though the guy was moving fast and sharp. and So they take the, pot, pot, take the bishop off the board. So at this point I'm going, okay, yeah, if somebody came to this board now, they'd go, oh, he's out and out winning. I just said, well, and as the evaluation bar showing out and out winning, but you know me, it's a positional thing. I'm saying, okay, yeah, so I've got a piece off the board, so what? Um, are my pieces in any places to actually do any damage? I was hoping they were going to resign, but they never did. So we captured, captured, so we're taking more pieces off the board now, looking to basically just trim it down. So they captured our knight, which is unprotected. So we're looking to attack his rook, which is unprotected. So they move it out of the way and they're continuing playing. So I'm like thinking, oh man, that means I'm going to have to put the work in here now. I'm going to have to try and corridor my pieces as best possible. And they really need to look at trying to get his pieces off the board as many as possible. And hopefully then we can gain some advantage. So he brings his pawn down defending. I was thinking at one point just taking the bishop off because, you know, um, piece for a piece and all that. So he brings the bishop back attacking, so, and he's moving fairly swift as well, and I'm thinking, crikey, I need to watch myself here because the advantage I've got could be quite easily lost. This guy looks like he knows what he's doing. He's made a bit of an error with that knight mover. Um, I, I'm still shocked at this today because really, I mean, the, the movements that he's coming out with after this um, showed I think quite a half decent level of understanding of the game but I think it was a speed thing he was just moving too fast so we move the queen out of the way we'll target in the pawn here but he sees this see what I mean he's seeing he's seeing stuff so he's um, probably kicking himself now at this point because really he knows he's got some skills but he just moved too quick putting his hand on that knight so he pushes us onto our queen. So we take the pawn. It's the pawn, isn't it? Yeah, we take the pawn now. We're trying to improve our position on the board. And I did miss a nice, lovely little trick, really. But it it probably still wouldn't have worked because his bishop may would maybe would have protected, but his bishop would have been taken off the board. I'm uh, just wondering if uh, anyone can see it. Um, I don't know if that would have been right or not. Uh, queen coming here. It's like attacking the rook and the rook. I don't know if that would have worked or not. Because maybe he's going to take here. Just let me push it up. See what happens. Yeah. Bishop e6. Bishop e6. Uh, there. So yeah. So there's no point really. Because the rook is going to defend anyway. So I probably went through that in my head. That's why I didn't do that. Okay. So trying to sly one here. Because the bishop is blocking the rook seeing whether or not we can take this off here so after all that, those calculations um, decided to try and do another cheap shot but the bishop moves wide again so the rook is still defending so when I'm seeing moves like this it's like basic and he's attacking our rook as well it shows that the player had the skills he's got good skills and but because they just move too fast I was really gutted for them, do you know, because they just moved too fast. It would have been a more exciting game for them if they had just taken their time. Because you can see with the moves they're making, um, they're really quite clever moves. Yeah, Realising that this rook was going to be taken by the queen. And then looking at an appropriate space for his bishop to actually attack the rook. So it's absolutely brilliant play. And it goes to show... Um, just because you have got the queen on the board does not mean you've won the game. you still got to keep playing. And the players are just wanting to kick your ass. So you need to um, watch yourself. So we bring the rook through now. So we've got like a, almost like an Alakines gun type thing. Usually the Alakines is with the queen at the back. But you know what I mean. So they move their king out of the line of fire of any potential sort of checks on the king at the moment. 
so now we're blocking off this bishop because the bishop is looking quite tasty coming towards this diagonal here um, any potential rook action with the bishop attacking the queen something along those lines but at the same token looking for a beautiful fork position here with the knight attacking the rook and the rook and the bishop so there's many many reasons for that particular knight move and the bishop takes the pawn and it did move there a little bit swift so we jumped in with the knight attacking so it's almost like the start of the snowball effect um, from this point on so we've now got sights on two rooks and the bishop so he moves the rook so we take the rook i was really um and ah about taking the bishop and being on the rook but the, uh, the higher taking the higher piece seems to be okay rook takes so now we're trying to mobilize small attack onto the um, pawn here but the opponent sees it you know so again it's it's showing that skill and knowledge and the moments where they moved a little bit too fast in the game are the moments where it kind of fell down for the player um, but other than that i believe if they had slowed down and they really would have taken me to town because the way that they the way they were expressing their moves in certain parts of the game showed a really good level and that would have really matched matched my knowledge I'd, yeah most definitely so we grab the pawn so we're on the bishop now so now the bishop comes down attacking the rook so i mean look at all this lovely attacking attacking type thing it makes you think it makes you think well am i am i winning here or what so we push the pawn up now obviously looking for a discover check on the bishop but he sees this as well and so it's like maybe the obvious moves but you know really you still have to be a bit switched on to see these types of things that i was kind of pulling out and um, lots of discovery type maneuvers going on so then he hides the bishop away and at this point i thought oh my god has he got one of those um little shelters for his king where we can't get in so i'm thinking well maybe if we can get rid of this pawn or something like that maybe start pushing these pawns up it might give them something to think about so we push onto the bishop first just to get rid of it and then push up again so putting more pressure onto this pawn looking to try and get rid of the rook and the bishop comes back so we now can take we're looking to trade down as best possible so let's get rid of these pieces so at this point still have to be careful but i'm thinking if we can just get his pieces off the board and that's going to be okay so we just take the bishop off so now he doesn't have the two bishops so now our queen can go over and start snapping up pawns and then we can basically go and get some type of promotion i won't labor this now so we get the promotion at this point the queen his king is stuck in the little corner oops it is he uh back one do two three four there did i twist it uh, yep yeah, okay there we are sorry about that so we put a check on the king here i'm just very mindful of stalemate situations here now you know you can have as many pieces on the ball but if it's going to mess you up so he stays on the white di white diagonal so thinking maybe get another queen i know that's being greedy because we can get a check on the king as well so we push the pawn up with a check so at this point it's still keeping that pressure on the king he moves and he's on the white square so we can bring the queen up now and put a check on so again it's to my benefit that i can develop my pawns and actually get them up so we've got three queens on the board now look which looks awesome but you have to still box clever so the queen is king is down so i'm checking is there any kind of checkmate or is he got a stalemate and i find the correct move and checkmate so that was the first game and again i would say if the opponent had moved a little bit slower and not touched that knight in the beginning this game really would have i i believe would have been a fantastic game for them and and both of us in terms of playing it probably could have ended in a draw or something like that um, because they had knowledge and they had skill so i'm really pleased with the first match um, obviously taking a win is always quite comfortable and pleasing but um 
because I'm experienced in these tournaments, I know full well, you know, I'm going to hit some strong people, I'm going to hit some uh, mediocre, I'm going to hit people same level as me, That you know, that type of thing. So I'm totally realist in that and I'm expecting the 50-50 going forward. Nice game. Okay, so after a little bit of a break and uh, looking at the open section and looking at some awesome games being delivered in the open section it's really pleasing I, I just love walking around and having a look at um, other people's games it really just shows you the the level of play uh, if you're aspiring to improve and um, uh, definitely just have a look at maybe the open section even the higher you know the um, 1800 section or whatever you know um, just to have a look at the difference in the way that the the game is applied and take a few hints and tips from those types of um, games as you're going through but at our level at my level at the minute in time i'm comfortable working on what we've got at the moment so we played black in our second game and i'm still notating i was considering whether i was going to stop notating but i thought no i'm going to have to plow through and just notate all of the games if it comes to it that i get to the end of the game and i don't have enough time maybe i'll just stop notating but i'll memorize the the ending of the game so in this particular game here the opponent um whipped out a nice little d4 so we blocked off and then they came charging down so pretty familiar with this type of maneuver so captured captured with the queen and brought the queen back and then the charging through a fall oh, i'm going to try this thing because we, we've been working on this um, aspect of uh, pushing the pawn up here if we're in this sort of position i may look at developing this type of maneuver a little bit further but for now fairly comfortable with just pushing the pawn up here then they grabbed and we grabbed the queen so i'm notating but this player moved faster than the previous player but they seem to have a little bit of a more confident air about them so i'm there scribbling down the notes as fast as they're moving and then i kind of fell into the rhythm of moving fast writing the notes down and kind of not really paying attention to the game i was in rote fashion just basically pushing my moves out thinking yeah okay i know how to work this knight's coming through attacking the pawn so we attack the pawn but when i'm looking at my position i'm saying to myself i'm not really happy with the position i've got but we bring the bishop through um protecting the knight maybe x-raying through to the pawn up on the side here and then they attack our knight so we take their knight off the board now for me i probably should have just brought the knight back but i was kind of fearful of the pawn pushing here onto the bishop but maybe i should i didn't have to have that much fear about it because i could have just danced around with my own bishop so th at this point here it was to me it was a bit of an error actually taking the knight off the board um i did come to the competition with that well i'm just going to just take pieces off the board keep it simple don't allow them to have any pieces and just work from there um because if i try and be fancy and arty it's not going to work but this actual capture after i'd actually taken them out of the board i did say because i took a while over my move you know i took a while over this move and i still went and took it off the board and realistically i could i should have i was really plumping for just moving the knight across but what i thought was i'm actually blocking this knight i'm not developing here bishop's not developed you know and he's got these pawns pushing down so i was panicking over nothing really so that was my own fault i own it completely from this point on in my head i'm like going oh i'm on the back foot here this is not a good position to be in so we jumped up with the knight and really again it's not really a nice position for the knight i mean potential ideas potentially maybe looking to attack this pawn at some stage if this pawn does move bringing the knight back around again maybe to actually sit here and then attack the rook and the king you know or just bringing it back around again but that one looked a little bit more promising you know in terms of oops excuse me bringing it around and eventually get into this point at some stage but that was kind of a long-winded way of doing stuff because the knight is not exactly jumping to this square 
so it kind of a strange looking night move i didn't really need to move it there i could have just moved it back to whence it came so it's like a snowball effect that i was creating for myself as i'm writing the notes down i'm looking at the board and i'm going what are you doing what are you doing okay so they pushed on to the bishop which is what we kind of feared so we brought the bishop through i mean even the gauge bar is showing it's not good in my head i just went this is not good clarky <laughs> this definitely is not the way to play this game and so right from the start i'm saying oh, i don't believe i've actually given this player this position and the opponent didn't do anything fantastic this was me making erroneous moves in this game panicking thinking i'm losing tempo and i'm making my position worse so they come through and they get the fork so they're basically going to get the um, up the exchange might even be for free with the absolute travesty of a position that i've got here so we move the king across attacking the knight they take the rook so the bishop attacks the um, knight i mean this whole position i've got here is absolutely terrible absolutely terrible it's like i'm trying to force something that isn't even there i don't have any legs i mean this rook potentially is eventually taking the knight but it's not going to be of any great shakes at all so we grab the bishop bring the knight back down again and basically the reduction of the pieces has left me with nothing and i'd actually given this to the player the player as you've seen did not do anything special whatsoever i actually gave this game to the opponent so we take the knight off the board at this point here i'm just thinking well i think i'm kind of going to be resigning here there's nothing really we can do he's got two rooks and what more can i really realistically do against this um so basically i just resigned at this point so yep yeah, um this wasn't for the the want of the actual player actually being better this was the want of me actually playing absolute garbage um so yep yeah, I chalk that one up, I chalk that one up as total bad um again really still excited about being in the otb and realizing that yeah okay i'm gonna have my ups and downs so um still went away had my apple had a thought had a think went and watched some open uh, tournament games and really loved them there were some fantastic games going on absolutely they were really good uh, so that was really quite impressive and had a few co good conversations with um, some of the players that were um, actually in my section as well so we're, we're all quite happy to be out there just playing and even if it was an unrated competition um, we just wanted to be out playing and getting that experience back so yeah really loved it but this game here all my own fault uh, gave the game to the opponent but we we continue on okay so we're plus one at the minute one and oh there's six rounds to go and um, my target is the 50 50 mark okay so i'm putting the pressure on myself to achieve the 50 50 mark if anything else i won't say this was a good game <laughs> okay so round three uh, after being fed watered and um, entertained by the open section i come into the round three with a kind of new vigor the vigor being okay just concentrate on the game still notating but really just taking my time and now trying to bring in the elements that we've been trying to practice um and be a bit more natural and just relax and chill a little bit and not really panic so much maybe about the, what's actually happening on the board and definitely not giving away the game like in round two so we played white here so we push through the center developed the knight captured the pawn and they captured back okay so at this point here i'm thinking this is not too bad we like this position kind of opens up their king area maybe we can start putting some pressure towards the king so they bring the knight out so we bring the bishop through x ray through to the uh, king and we develop the knight and this was a little bit an, a bit of an odd move with the queen moving here um so i thought 
So they put pressure onto the bishop and we move the bishop back. They develop their knight. So now we've got like a two on one type situation. I know he does have the pawn there, but if he splits his pawns, maybe that's going to be of benefit to us. So he brings his bishop through. So we take the bishop off the board. Knights want the bishops in our mantra. And then we take the free pawn here. So we're currently up a piece, you know, um, so that's quite good. We've, we've worked quite nicely to basically get a good focal point and attack a higher piece with a lesser piece as well. Queen comes down, puts a check on our king. We have to bring the knight back. I was looking for the golden shot. Yeah, so I was looking for the golden shot at some point of getting to this square here and when they did this move i was like oh what do i do i can't do it because the queen's just going to take so i have to come back most most chess players well i know i i potentially don't really like going backwards you know if you're going forwards then you want to just keep pressing but you have to look at your blind spots and um kind of block that off a little bit so they open up their dark square bishop so we take the knight off the board and castle king safety all pretty straightforward at the minute i'm conscious his queen is on the other side of the ball but then he's looking like he's potentially looking to cause some damage so we go and attack the bishop queen comes in to attack the knight so we take the bishop off the board as we say knights hunt the bishops in our mantra so at this point i did feel okay this is quite nice he's got the split pawns that we'd um predicted so maybe we should be able to just bounce quite nicely now towards gaining some advantages I bring the queen through and um, going for a bit of an obvious attack on the pawn and he pushes the pawn so now we're supported the, by the queen we can attack their uh, queen with the bishop but we've actually allowed them to get the pawn back so whether that was done on purpose or not i believe my position was still okay to actually cause them some trouble so we push the pawn up onto the queen i don't in my head i thought to myself i don't really want to give you the pawn back because i really feel like this is a winning position but with his queen being in that position i'm believing i can make something of this so he moves his queen into the corner here and even another gauge bar showing yes it's looking like we're winning um i felt like there was something but i i just couldn't quite grasp it I knew for a fact this was going to stop his um, king from castling. Where do we go from there? So we brought the bishop through, so that stops his king from castling. And then he brings his rook through. Again, I'm thinking, this has got to be winning for me. But I'm doing my notations, the time is running down. I'm taking a lot more time thinking about my moves. So I'm like thinking, well, I don't really want to go down the way that I went down in that last one don't want to give them the game um, if I can get a draw out of this I'm really going to be fairly comfortable so we move the Queen across now looking to attack this pawn or this pawn so we're attacking two pieces at the minute but then the Knight jumps back and it's defending both of them so I thought oh that's a bit annoying isn't it but we can always take the Knight off the board so we take the Knight off the board and they take with the rook so i am thinking i am i've got to be in an advantage here what can i what's going to be wrong with them this situation so we take with a check and the king moves now this was the quid pro quo situation and i sat there and i did take a while over this move i'm going oh i could get his rook off the board but i know his king can come here but then i can go and get this pawn but then it's not going to work right because his rooks are linked up and I've given him a tempo to actually work together with his rook and his queen on this file so I make the move I mean the gauge bars um, agreeing with me on that side it's like that wasn't the best because you're not winning the rook so what is the point in doing that I hoped what I did hope was I, I thought to myself maybe he's going to panic and he's going to bring it here that's what i hoped i hoped he was going to do that rather than go here you know i thought maybe he's suffering a bit of um you know me being in his face that he's not actually going to go there 
And that's what I hoped he was going to do. But he didn't. So we brought our rook through now. We didn't want to lose a pawn because he's got his queen on this pawn as well. So the tempo is down now in terms of actually grabbing this pawn here. So it's uh, in my head, it's kind of petering out to be a draw. Even though I think we're one pawn up, are we? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. It, in my head, after that situation of his king moving to there, and I just I resigned to the fact that well, it was a draw. Even though I'm a plus one, so we're trying to own the file, hoping that they make a mistake of some sort. Uh, so we push this pawn because we want to kind of protect it. King moves over, so we just take it off the board, and even the gauge bar starting to um, flounder at our attempts. So we move the king across now, looking to support the rook if anything, and keeping itself safe. So at this point here, I'd already visualised that this is why I was saying it's going to be a draw because it's going to come round here. It's going to try and either take this pawn or take this pawn here. Um, but I did a minor oversight because I went and attacked the king and my move order in my head when I'm doing my notation da -da -da -da, yep, da -da -da, and then I looked up and then I moved um, but I had actually said that I was going to move this in my head I was going to move this first and then move the king but because I was notating and jumbling up my moves basically um, I did the move order wrong sounds like a rookie mistake but hey I'd already re already resigned myself to the fact that it was a draw so I, I didn't really beat myself up too much that he was going to take the pawn after I did this um, erroneous king move here. So he does take, so we push the pawn up and then we can bring the rook up defend him and it realistically is a draw, there's nothing to be done really here and so basically we agreed to a draw. I did offer a draw early on around about this point here where I did that queen move yeah so after whoa, 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 not there. yeah so after his king moves there i then i did then offer a draw um obviously he refused but i don't know why because he was down a pawn i think um so we brought the rook across so for, at this point i was just playing for a draw i was wasn't playing for a win but the rook coming down taking the pawn that really solidified in my head it was a draw Yep, so uh, another kind of sketchy game on that side. Um, still happy um, to be playing in the over the board, you know, over the board games, and again, really kind of oof. in my head. I didn't display it on the board. I was just like thinking, oh, you spent so much time over that move. All you had to do was just take this. Oh, hold on, go back one. There we go. Yeah, so got that there, there. Yeah, shouldn't have spent so much time over that. Should have just taken this pawn here. I've got a massive pawn majority on this side. Look how simple and easy that is. But over the board just sends you crazy. You think you see something and it's not. It's not really there. I shouldn't have gone with the option of hoping that he's going to come here and then I get the rook off the board. That was a major, major major blunder on my part but we learn from these things this is the key thing I'm owning what is actually happening on the board each game I'm owning what is happening I'm not blaming anybody else I'm not saying that the opponent was really good I'm, I'm looking at what I did in the game we had some lovely advantage in this game all the way through this particular game but we blew it just by that tiny maneuver there overthinking and hoping nothing wrong with hope by the way especially if it's a good hope this really wasn't a good hope some people could have gone there but you know obviously he went here and that saved him okay so we'll go on to the round four i'll say that was a half decent good game based on the pressure that i was putting towards the player um, but the back end of the game could have been done better Okay, so round four, uh, playing as white. So we push through the center, still notating. And 
I'm kind of getting fed up of notating because the time factor really does seem to go down dead quick. It's a 25 minute zero increment gain. So there's no increment. The time is just rapidly going down. I suppose that's why they call it rapid play. Um, so in this one, I did say I'm, I'm going to keep on notating, but um, if it gets to a struggle, I'm definitely not doing the notation. I'm going to try and memorize this, if anything, because it really is slowing me down and it's not really helping my decision making at this moment um, it's first over the board tournament um, I'm expecting all these little quirks and stuff hopefully can get them ironed out and I probably won't notate if I'm doing another rapid tournament I won't, I don't, I'm not going to be notating it just takes too long um, longer play games which is what I've booked in for um, in September it's at 90 minute and 10 second games whoa um yeah definitely noted notating in those all right so as you know anyway i don't really like the shorter games but this is a longer type short game so the opponent pushed through with the old c5 okay so we brought our knight through here and then they're going for the fianchetto the slow type looking thing and i did think it looked a little bit odd but um let's continue so we attacked through the center they brought the bishop through and then we brought our bishop out they captured and then we captured brought their knight out so we brought our bishop through now realistically this move to me is a little bit arty because ordinarily i just take the knight off the board but i kind of was overthinking the whole the whole situation um i'm sat there notating looking at the board i'm going well okay we should really develop the pieces out but that is really not what i've done in practice you know the idea is to simply just take pieces off the board so what was worrying me about that uh, nothing really i just thought well okay let's just get our pieces out and get them working together um based on the last game that we just played i'm like going okay we worked our pieces together okay in that one so let's just do the same thing here but it's still a bit slow i think i was again still panicking about this pawn because the bishop's got the x-ray through and again i would just normally push this pawn yeah why are the arrows going off there we go yeah i, I could push this pawn to protect so i didn't do that but i just brought the bishop out hmm so they develop their knight so we develop our knight so it's all hunky dory at the minute no pieces have been taken off the board i'm shocked and surprised and then i go on castle okay so keeping this tension malarkey is definitely not my scene uh, it's showing drawish at the minute but then there's a move order situation that causes a little bit of an issue so we grab the knight and then we bring the queen up into the center of the board looking to basically block off this pawn um, kind of holding the bishop to ransom at this moment because it has to protect this pawn here but it does have the knight protecting and the queen protecting so the knight comes back attacking the queen so we move the queen out of the way i mean this is where realistically it's a little bit too fancy and arty for me i mean i'm looking potentially to attack the bishop um, my queen is a little bit up in the air and I'm potentially going to be losing out on tempo with them blasting through the center here so why on earth I left it there I don't know potentially just bringing it back here would have been a lot better I think so he releases the bishop so we move our queen across to the other side looking to see if he's, she's going to go for an, uh, a queen exchange but no she blasts through the center which basically is you know that was the concern and I again i'd done that to myself i'd over egged the queen my pieces are not really in the best position and they've I've allowed them to come through the center to win all important tempi on me so we take the queen and then we take the pawn and then we're attacking the knight but look at this position look at the gauge bar yep that's how my brain felt i felt this isn't right it doesn't look like they're doing anything major but what they do have is these pawns in our usual games would never even be there so what actually happened i mean he's looking to well she's looking to put this on here so now we've lost a minor piece from that um exchange 
absolutely shocking i sat there and i thought my god this notation stuff is really doing my bones in um so we take and they take so now they're uh, they've got one two three four we've got one two three four but we're going to lose another piece in a moment and there so the bishop comes back so it's not looking too healthy for us we do have actually have a knight and a bishop but the position is not good knight could take there and double our pawns and he's still got this elevated pawn down the bottom here which if we don't do something about um we're going to be paying the price but the bishop comes and defends then the knight comes and does some fancy dancing stuff i'm like oh my giddy aunt you know could have just simply taken his yeah so what then he's got to check on my king then just move it out of the way arty business absolute arty business and we're not into art so yeah feeling a little bit disappointed in this um in this particular game i'm sat there going i don't understand what actually happened here well i do because i didn't play what i would normally play i didn't take the knight off the board you know i didn't take the pawn off the board i didn't take the pieces that i needed to take off the board and find appropriate positions all because i'm giddy in this oh i'm at the otb competition and i'm my time is running down i'm having to write these notes here that's the massive difference and yeah the, the, i was putting pressure on myself internally uh, nothing else it was just me putting that pressure on so they come down so the knight comes and attacks the bishop so they actually take the the pawn and put a check on our king so they're out and out winning here absolutely out and out winning so at this point i'm thinking this is odd 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 i had the cheek to offer a draw around about this point here and she sat there nice stern face and shook her head and i thought damn damn oh dear she's gonna cream me look at this pawn here this pawn is never gonna be moved and he's got she's got bishops just trading down on my king and probably this coming here at some point maybe even a sacrifice of the rook it was not looking good so i decided to do a bit of dancing with the knight somehow maybe looking to maybe come here i'm trying to find a, find an angle for the for my knight in some way ideally probably sitting here and attacking the the bishop don't know if that would come off or not so she's now starting to push these pawns now they're definitely getting worried now so we bring our rook through maybe looking to exchange the rook off who knows at this stage so the, she puts more pressure again on my knight so we bring our bishop through yes so this was the definite move order that was done wrong i think the knight really should have been coming here would have given me a, a little bit more of something to work with you know so we brought the bishop through but it was all based on what the opponent does so I, I was chancing my arm and they took our rook we took and then they took and then we've got a knight and a rook against a bishop and a rook and look at all these pawns waiting to come down and get promoted oh dear me i offered a draw at this point she took a bit and then no so that was a definite no i thought well i felt really bad actually you know offering the draw again i, I think some of the, some rules say you can only offer it once and then you've got to leave it alone or something but i thought well you know i'm under pressure here and she doesn't seem to mind me offering the draw so let's uh, crack on so she moved the king across so now we're trying to get rid of this pawn somehow maybe try to get the knight involved somewhere across here maybe to put some checks on the king maybe try and get their rook off the board and we bring the rook through as a blocker for now and kind of an idea of bringing the knight across here coming down here then at least we'll have a two on one on this pawn and maybe get this pawn out of the way and maybe the bishop as well if they do capture so that was my only kind of saving grace to to maybe potentially go for a draw 
and I thought well this might be uh, for me a bit of a benefit because this pawn pushing down I didn't really see what the strength was there so we captured the pawn just to get that pawn out of the way because it was highly elevated down the port board and now we're looking to try this type of maneuver here attacking the bishop and the pawn at the same time one of the key issues is he does have his rook there she does have his her rook there sorry but the rook actually moved to this square and i'm thinking oh my god she's gonna squish me that's what she's aiming for yeah that's what she's aiming for oh dear so i bring the knight down okay I'm, I'm thinking well if she does go there then at least we can maybe potentially just take the rook and then we're supporting the pawn but she moves the um, bishop back at this point i'm thinking well it's going to be a nice position if we can get here it's going to be a nice position for our knight to mobilize and protect this square that's all a bit messy So we grabbed the we grabbed the pawn so i was quite pleased that um, she did a little bit of a shuffle in a chair because i'm thinking oh my gosh and um, we might be able to get something here but it all depends on what she does i mean she does have all of the these two past pawns here um we've got like one one past and one semi but it all depends on what she does next and i'm i put down the pen and the notation at this point here at this point here um i put down the pen and notation and i was on one minute and 15 seconds well, one minute and 16 seconds don't want to discount that second um left and i think she had about what is it four minutes or something like that uh, so that shows the difference when you're doing notation so i thought right put it down i'll just try and commit it to memory now based on what we've got so i brought the knight down as i was shown so i was whipping out the moves at this point because i'd seen a pattern that i thought might work for me and they pushed their pawn down and it again i just thought whoa damn um, i don't know if she's knowing the endings or anything you know with these pawns these are a benefit you'd expect to see these being pushed down so we brought the knight across here looking to maybe get this rook off the board she doesn't have to exchange at all move the king so we went and attacked the um, rook to see whether or not it was going to exchange. She didn't have to, but she did. So we grabbed here and then I offered a draw at this point. And as you can see, the gauge bar is actually 0, 0.0. So my mental Rolodex for offering the draw was on point on this occasion. And she quickly um, she put out hand and said yes. So we agreed a draw here and on looking at it i did think well if it had carried on i might have had a win here but hey i wasn't going to take that chance we were playing some shocking chess and um owned every part of it and we know why it happened we lost tempo and we weren't playing the game that we play so i'm fairly happy because we weren't playing the game that we played so top notch good game um ish <laughs> so we go on to the next one okay so in this game was um I, I got coffeeed up and i was all buzzing and ready for the next game thinking yes i'm gonna charge in here and my eyes are completely dilated i was like oh I was so buzzing and i said well okay continue with the notation as well you know as you're going and we're playing as black in this game so this was we were on one win one loss and two draws so that's basically two that's two points and our target really was getting three points so in this game i was thinking well if i can get a draw or if i can get a win then i'm going to be on target for the 50 50. playing as black we just blocked off and the opponent was um, nice and steady away they were moving fairly swiftly each move they weren't even taking probably even 10 seconds over any any of the moves that they made and which was quite impressive really because they seemed to be blocking off everything that i was doing and we came through and just uh have a look at the key points here so captured captured so realistically again 
probably should have just stayed away from taking it because we know that this rook is going to be looking at opening this file here it is dangerous and i thought to myself well i know that's going to happen but maybe i can circumvent it but this kind of was the start of the process for losing that all important tempo and position on the board so as we know we don't usually take here again this is another game where i've done something we don't usually do and i think for this tournament it was fantastic for me just to get back into there and find out what it is that i usually do in these tournaments and i have fallen foul of doing this sort of stuff where i am um, i'll do my training but then when i go to the tournament i do the exact opposite just because it feels different you know it feels different and to me when i play the games that um, are focused on what i am actually practicing um i fare a little bit better <clears throat> so again this is one of those games where i'm doing i'm doing stuff that i don't train to do so i paid the price for it so kudos to the opponent so the capture captured so we attack the queen bring the bishop through and bring the bishop back again so we have to open up that area so now the knight's looking to try and defend the area bringing it up and attacking all pretty straightforward still so we're looking to see if we could get the queen off the ball but it doesn't capture all pretty simple just um bringing the queen through getting the king off of the potential threat for this area bring the queen back for an exchange and they're gobbling up the pawns at the minute and the position for this side of the board really is um it's to me it's too much i basically resigned at this point um when i'd actually hit the clock um you know my side of the clock all the numbers had disappeared off of the clock um and there was no point in calling the, the organizer to fix the clock i thought well you're winning anyway so i just resigned um so yeah and th this was a game where basically not utilizing what i know or what i train to do um cost me plenty but i'm owning what's actually happening in the game i'm owning what's actually occurred so i'm fairly happy and comfortable that going forward and um, there'll be much improvements in the way that i deliver my games so yeah really really pleased with that really got nice guy as well and uh, yeah yeah um couldn't have wished for a better person to have um won the game really but we weren't getting blown out of the water it's just we knew full well taking that then opens up a can of worms and that's a few games that we've had um in the tournament where we've done stuff that isn't improving our position in any way shape and we need to just stick with what we do when we're practicing i'm not the only one that falls into this when i look at um lots of um you know streamers who do like um over the board type stuff and do the online stuff as well and they're playing in tournaments all over the place um they do the same things you know all the training that they do and then they end up doing crazy moves and they think well why why did i make that move um i knew this was going to happen but i still went and did this so it happens to many chess players so i'm not beating myself up in any way what i'm looking at is improving on going for going forward so this left me with being two out of five at the minute and i wanted to get the 50 50 mark so the next game i really said to myself you're gonna have to just focus on what it is that you do normally yeah as best possible if you can and then see how it goes from there and then maybe feel happy with what you've, you you're learning so far or maybe need to go back to the drawing board and think of something else okay so this is round six uh, so this is the game where in my head i'm saying i have to win in order to get the 50 50 um in order to get the three points out of the six um i need to win this game and i'd remembered the recent game recent um sort of tutorial to myself and um, that i'd done within the chess gym uh, where i posted something along the lines of 
a must win situation you have to win this game this is how you're going to win you are going to win no matter what this is what you're going to do you no matter who comes on the online you're going to win so the focal point was on winning i don't usually have that mindset you see so i have to kind of force myself to have that winning mentality so we played black in this game here so the opponent um, pushed through with d4 and thought well just block that off quite nicely and then the knight came out so we developed our knight and they pushed through the center with the pawn i thought it might have come for a bigger thing but um obviously you know bringing the knight through here or something something felt okay for us in this type of position there doesn't seem to be much activity going on and they bring the bishop out and this point here i'm thinking okay there's quite a bit of space and stuff going on here doesn't mean there's anything definite it's just that I've, it's very rare i've seen this type of maneuver it felt kind of somber so then they brought the knight out so we brought the bishop through x-raying through to the king nothing unusual there and then they pushed with the h3 so we captured the knight with a check on his king something in my head was going this looks like there's gonna be some space around his king area it does look simple at this moment in time so they take and we bring the bishop back because it's under attack and then they attack again so then we attack their bishop and oh very clever bishops attacking through blocking our king from castling so i'm thinking man we need to win this game and this player is blocking off my king from actually castling how can we make this better for us i mean the bishop doesn't have any protection so potentially we could come here and maybe come here and maybe take this pawn off the board if anything happens or if they actually move this pawn then we'll get a bit of an advantage and be able to take the bishop off the board with a check on the king you never know these things can happen so we bring the knight up now it's attacking the pawn here because it's got no protection on it at the moment so they do actually move the pawn down so in essence there is the thought process of bringing the queen here with a check on the king getting the bishop off the board so we move the pawn up and they do actually capture the pawn which i thought was quite nice i mean maybe it's a bit of a stealth move but we went for it anyway um, I was feeling quite pleased with that because it was going to be winning a piece the opponent took ages over this next move because the, there was nothing that could actually block the way of the position that we currently had so he was going to lose the bishop if anything so he eventually moved the king so we took the bishop off the board feeling quite mean now actually feeling quite yes this is positive but still have to be careful so the knight comes down attacking our bishop so we can take this pawn off the board maybe opening up some space towards the king area a little bit more and the queen comes down so he's still fighting on so at this point here with the queen jumping to this spot i did take my time and i, I just saw the pattern and i thought oh, i'm gonna have to go for that answer and at that point the opponent resigned so that was only a 14 move game in the last game but it did solidify the three out of six that i wanted uh, it was the game that i needed to win so we put it all in as best possible based on what the opponent did and so we got 50 50 three out of six so all in all a successful tournament for a successful otb first tournament in years um it's unrated but still it's the experience of playing and loads of takeaways from there as well and loads for going forward to playing the otb the key thing is really just to continue doing what i normally would do in my games and not change when i'm playing over the board and uh, there is nothing different to the way that i play and train so there's don't try and create a problem because I, uh, in a few of these games, I created the problems myself, and that was it. Though it's not the opponent was playing brilliantly or anything. No slant on the um, players, um, but realistically, I just 
I gave the games away and so going forward we need to just keep focused on how we train and keep the mantra and yep keep using the answer process as best possible and we should do okay September I believe is the next one which is a 90 minute and 10 second tournament fantastic five games I've taken a buy in the first one so the Friday evening I'm not doing that one but the rest of them I'm, um, I'm hopefully getting in there so that's going to be really interesting so yep yeah. and um, oh and the section that I actually joined was the under 1450 section just to be clear on that because my rapid rating is 1263 so I'm really pleased and chuffed to have actually been out there met people met a lot of new people actually I've not seen these people before because um, usually you see like a lot of the old guard and but these years must have seen quite a lot of people off so um, hopefully I'll see the old guard again because they're the they're the secret grandmasters that will play in these uh, under 1400 area and I, I love to see them play anyway that was the tournament scene for now hopefully catch you again in September for some more OTB experience